well, I think I'm just overloaded completely with stuff that I need and that I use, but I've just got too many of the same devices. This is normally my webcam. <laughs> I recommend it to anybody to get this sort of web webcam. It's a Logitech and it's brilliant. Um, my last trip to Ireland um, saw the end to one of my video cameras. Uh, my video camera was swimming in um, a can of cider that's, that broke in my bag and went all over my camera. So one of my favourite cameras is gone. The one that allowed me to have this round kind of um, image of myself and I, I don't know how to explain it. Um, but that's gone now. The great effects on the camera so uh, I'll say goodbye to it and thank it very much for all the, the years of satisfaction and being able to get things done. I'm sitting here I'm doing some SMS's to people because I'm, I'm not keeping in contact. I mean I could live in this apartment um, for the rest of my days uh, without seeing anybody ever again. That's the, my state of mentality at the moment. Uh, and I know that it's very much to do with hormones. The fact that I don't have my testosterone in me, the fact that I'm not social, essentially. I, I still go out, I still go to parties, I still go out to bars, I still dance. Though I wouldn't be dancing as well as I normally would because I'm just too overly conscious of myself. And I know that I'm being overly conscious about myself. You know, I came to this city and I was full of life full of energy, full of party attitude and nice attitude. I mean, so many people think I'm brilliant and they love me, you know, and so they should just because, you know, that me is a very good me. But the other side of me is this side of, like, insecure, not confident, even though mo many people would think I'm totally confident, if not overconfident, when they see me. I think that's kind of when I get outside into the into the you know into the public light and all sorts of possibilities of meeting new people and interesting people and whatever and I just and I'm a Leo and I love socialness I love to be social and uh, when I get outside I I just oh I breathe the air and oh yeah and I get all these sort of feelings of possibilities and um, not to mention the fantasy possibilities in my head of uh, sexual encounters but since I've been off the testosterone, I've noticed I've noticed the decrease in my sexual activity and also even in masturbation, uh, even um, uh, and also hugely like um, I'm I'm in the head. Um, I understand myself as a teenager more now. I mean, I could have had girlfriends when I was a teenager because a lot of girls did like me at that point, even with my teeth completely in bits. They still liked me, and and I didn't. I wasn't convinced of it. I thought I was ugly and blah blah. Um, I know in my head that I'm not ugly, but in the heart and everywhere else, even at this point in time, I would still consider myself to be ugly. You know, so um, it's funny. Um, you know, it, it's it's you need to tell yourself, um, you know, constantly. You know that. Just keep going, you are yourself, love yourself, continue going. Uh, the reason I went on this experiment, and it is an experiment still not to be on it, and it'll be an experiment when I go back on it to see how long it'll be by the time I get balanced again, you know. Um, and even taking the testosterone is not going to fix my problems. It's only going to... Uh, make me feel better in the head and um, make me feel stronger in the body on levels, you know, because when I fall it, it hurts a lot, you know, and when I'm on testosterone it really doesn't hurt that much. There are differences there for me and it, it's that this YouTube experience is basically about um, you know, documenting what's happening to me and what I also think about um, issues that affect me and that might affect other people. I'm talking about all my opinions there. Um, what I find amazing though is the lack of care, or at least the lack of looking of care uh, of, from doctors and professionals and even high up there XXYs who are high flyers. Not that I think there's any high flyer XXY out there to be, on, to be honest, um, as much as they 
would like to believe that they're high flyers. I don't see evidence of high flying XXYs in general, you know, uh, uh, or maybe they just feel that there's no hope, you know, that they think just get on with their own life, there's no point reaching out to anybody else because XXYs are genuinely difficult, generally and genuinely difficult people, um, especially to get on with themselves. Um, because we we all learned from medical textbooks um, about um, XXY, especially Klinefelter syndrome, and you know many of us uh, do not fit into this category. So uh, you know we're all different, and we're and once you come onto an XXY forum group, you realise that there's just no way of saying, "Hey, I've got a scratch behind my right ear." Have you? You know, there's no there's no uh, there's no way really of of having a yes. We're all that. Except for the small testes, the small hard testes, that would be a huge indication to see if somebody's XXY or not. Um, now, as as Graham says, he got um, he got fake balls. He 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 got surgery and got plastic balls basically put in him. Um, and you know, so in, in that situation, if you were to to uh, make Graham nude uh, and look at him, you wouldn't see um, uh, somebody who's XXY straight away, or maybe you wouldn't at all. Um, you know, so there's it's also very difficult to discover who is XXY and who's not. So the only way to do it really, to know for certain, is to screen every single baby that is born and check. And my resentment really of the medical community in general, not completely, um, it, it has a lot to do with, with these professionals telling us, the people, what is and what isn't, yet they're not screening um, every single baby that's born. There's something wrong there, isn't there? I mean, uh, you know, it's like, this is the perfect example, It's I don't know if it's perfect, but we'll see, you know, America, you know, uh, America, when I've been giving out about America and saying, oh, Americans this and America this and that and the other and terrible and warmongers and, you know, terrorists themselves not practicing what they preach, stuff like that, you know, um, which doesn't go well down in Camp America, even to the people who love me who are Americans. I know you can't stand this, but that's the way it is. For me, I, I, I don't, I have a huge resentment towards America too, but my point is that, you know, with all the good that America do do, right, um, like, you know, aiding um, poor countries and um, sending your armies into um, war conflicted areas, that's also a very good thing to do, you know, to try and keep the peace. Um, I won't tangent into any of these thoughts now. Um, it's the same thing, like, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how much good America does, the bad, over, you know, weighs out more, you know. Um, and and that's what I'd like to, you see this is where my, my brain's gone, now I've forgotten what the comparison point is, I couldn't give you the two topics now, you know, I know I could give you the America point and then what was I talking about before, I don't know, but it does make sense, rewind and get it, okay, <laughs> but that's, I don't mind admitting things like that because that's important, you know, that's, that's what people would call ADHD, um, and I don't mind being, um, categorized or labeled as somebody who has difficulty with remembering what I've just said, which is short-term memory. Uh, but also, uh, yeah, I've no problem being labeled that, like, uh, labeled as a person who has difficulties, blah, 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 but I don't want to be labeled as a disorder. So therefore I reject any name, or label, and word that the medical institutions have invented for for what? You know, not for my mental health. It's not good for the mental health to call yourself a disorder or an abnormality, <laughs> you know. Uh, but this is, again, the area where medical scientists are still way behind because they don't understand the power of the mind. They don't understand it at all unless they get a, a, a CAT scan or something or, or whatever scan. To, uh, is it an MRI scan even? The neurologists use them, you know. What does that do? They're only looking at, at little beeps and, and lines on a piece of paper that the computer has uh, 
you know, generated from um, studying the brain. You know, sorry, sorry, no, but the, the medical science community in general, the, the main ones, uh, not the guys uh, on the on the sidelines, the the scientists who are in there saying, "Hey, uh, main professor, listen to this. I have a theory on blah blah." The main professor doesn't want to know unless that theory's got something to do with making money or making a name for yourself. Forget about it. Looking after people, they're not looking after people. If they were, they'd screen every baby. So there was a lot of resentment there, and it's going to take more than an eleven-minute video here to uh, explain um, my resentment towards um, so-called professionals of this world um, and one thing is not everything in life can be proven um, you know uh, you know sometimes you have to take um, somebody's word for it such as God Ciao